We're going to give you kind of an overall objective of what we're kind of doing with this series. Um, so we're, this is kind of for all the series and just like Becky asked, it is recorded and it's an eight part series. So if you missed the beef one from last Monday, we can certainly have you go back and watch that because everything's recorded. And it's a perfect opportunity for us to embrace this uh, new virtual learning reality of being in this COVID season. So all these sessions are gonna touch on training and grooming. We're talk about a showmanship species video that North Dakota has um, shot and presented. We'll cover some showmanship movement and positions. And then we'll talk about you as an exhibitor and um, just some of the different things that you can be as a mentor um, and showing your leadership. So Dr. Hoffman, why don't you take it away? Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Skirpe. So I get the opportunity uh, to, uh, to talk to you about uh, sheep showmanship. And I've drawn this together to a little bit of the background of, of some of the things that we want to accomplish. And so this is the format that, that I'll follow, particularly specific to this video. So we're gonna first talk about personal conduct, uh, touch a little bit on terms of nutrition, equipment, uh, preparation of those lambs, and then uh, grooming and fitting, and then, of course, we'll try to focus as much as we possibly can on the grooming and fitting as well. Um, also uh, then, uh, but the true focus then will be our, our skills in the ring, how we can be able to correctly provide a high quality uh, showing opportunity for our youth in 4-H and FFA. And then we will augment that with a showmanship video uh, that our colleagues uh, through North Dakota State University Extension put together uh, to show us just a little bit of descriptions on, on how animals are moving and describe that and then hopefully have some dialogue for you as well. So on terms of our personal conduct, uh, we have a 4-H dress code uh, as part of North Dakota and with that individuals are to wear a white, green or gray or yellow shirt and blouse and it should have a 4-H emblem on that. Um, and then also we would want to make sure just in terms of those generalities that we have a basic understanding of our project um, and know what we are feeding that, what information we are providing um, for the background. Because not only is the exhibition of our animals uh, just the culmination hopefully of our shows, but it may be the culmination of a period of time from when those were purchased, uh, if it was from the spring to, uh, to show them in the fall or at least a majority of the uh, northern and midwestern states, obviously on different timelines in different regions across America. Or you may be um, one that has raised either your market animals or your breeding animals. So a couple things here as we discuss that and then kind of shift into a, a focus here as we move on is that remember that you are a, a mentor to others and you're an ambassador to our industry. And so knowing that you are within a show ring just allows us the chance to be out there and to exhibit our animals and the hard work and the efforts that you've put in throughout the summer. From a simplistic standpoint, but truthfully just courtesy, avoid the bumping and crowding and, and uh, we have no need nor ever should we expect hitting of animals and hopefully you can work with your animal on so that there had been some work prior to and if there is if, if it was to spook it for any particular reason that we have uh, an opportunity to stay calm and be out there remember to congratulate those winners learn from your mistakes and um that that each of us are winners i think that we can understand relative to showmanship uh, that may be different is that if we were showing our animals obviously we try to do the best that we can uh, in terms of exhibiting those, but some of us, maybe that showmanship is the true Super Bowl because each person gets to walk out with the given uh, chance to know that they can be competitive and they can be rewarded for their efforts. So one of the things quickly here is the nutrition portion. And so we don't wanna go into this too much. And in fact, it's best to, again, have a little bit of an understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, with feeding your lamb, you're gonna want to get those lambs growing Truthfully, as soon as uh, when they are on the lamb to provide either some soybean meal 
some high protein treat feed and concentrates for those animals. A complete feed provides you a better opportunity so that they don't sort through those because animals will grab the whole corns or the whole kernels and sometimes forget the fines. As we are growing those animals, we'll have a higher protein of 18 to 20% for younger lambs. And then as we slow those lambs down or, or getting closer to our ideal market weight, uh, we can decrease the amount of protein that is in those feeds to approximately 14 to 16% uh, in terms of the proteins. Uh, and that allows us again to understand here a couple things as we move to our third bullet point is what is our target weight? If we have a smaller framed animal, that smaller framed animal may be in the lower 100s at 110, 115, 120. One can presume that the average uh, there, at least for some markets, uh, weights would be approximately 130 to 145. Um, but there's plenty of lambs that can go above that. Our industry does accept some that are above that as well. Uh, but if we can stay in a range and have an understanding that fits, I aim for normally about two tenths to three tenths of, uh, of back fat, uh, preferably under three tenths, uh, certainly. But if you have an idea of where we can try to be in terms of finish weight and ideal fat cover, that allows us the comp competition to, uh, to be as best as we can relative to market acceptability. There are various supplements available in particular, and I didn't need to uh, just pick out two of these, but we have a feed analysis. Uh, of two different feeds and in fact work with the ones that fit best for you. I'm not particularly advocating for any and you can decide if there's supplements that may work. I'm well aware that many people can accomplish what they want to do in the show ring truthfully by using corn and oats to concentrate and working uh, hard in terms of that standpoint. There's also some feed additives that can help for different reasons that may work for you. You have to identify that. The last thing on this is provide your lamb with clean and fresh water. To me, some of our challenges come on our, our water and our challenges with um, our industry as well. And in case some places will not allow drenching of lambs, so some people so choose to use a complete feed that's liquid. I can't particularly advocate that and you have to identify what works best for your operations. Um, but then we can be able to if you so choose to limit water, maybe make sure that it's only a, a little bit the night before or morning of and make sure that that's not a problem from an animal welfare standpoint for us to move forward. So our equipment, we have our sheep halter. Uh, most of the time we will start with a nylon halter that we can have available. We also have a curry comb um, that is in the top left. That could be used to allow us to get some of the larger pieces of straw or sawdust out, a wool card that we could particularly use, uh, used to hopefully just be used more so in the breeding sheep. Of course, uh, now in our game where everything has a little bit more wool uh, from the knee and hock down, uh, we've got a wool card that we could be able to use. The hand sheep shears there is in the middle. Uh, and I so choose the leather bound ones uh, in terms of my game uh, there of using them. It's certainly worth the little extra efforts and a little extra prices there so that your hands aren't nearly as painful by the end of the uh, summer. We put two different options there for electric clippers. Um, and then the one on the farther right in the top right corner uh, would be more for a rough cut of an animal. You can shape out a breeding sheep and provide uh, improvements in terms of decreasing the amount of wool that may be on the sides and the front end and leveling out the top shape. And then a lot of the people will also use more of a portable or even a two speed clipper there uh, in the in the maroon color uh, to be able to fine up some of those places, particularly in terms of the uh, the head and, and leg um, wool that we do have that has become ever so popular. So we also want some wool and, and clipper lube if we can, or wool or clipper lube. Uh, trimming stand would certainly be appreciated. We have opportunities to, uh, to use a tube and or a blanket. And what this is primarily doing is allowing us to keep those animals a little cleaner because we have our hose and our soap and our blower that we can be able to wash them, provide them as bright and as white as we can and, and provide that skin condition uh, that ideally we would like and be able to use that for our um, keeping them a little bit cleaner. As we said, 
but those can also be used in breeding sheep as well. Meat breed, breeding sheep, we will wash. Wool breed, we will not. And in fact, uh, a bigger difference on that. And then, of course, making the uh, clipping of those animals as we move through it. We have our um, also our hoof trimmer um, that made it on the far right corner. And I've discussed with many of people uh, that often uh, old school times, they had two metal fulcrums or two metal levers that um, would come together and clip the hooves. And that was absolutely the wrong idea. And uh, a young lady that was by the age of approximately 85 years old told me, why don't we use these tree pruners? And I thought it was uh, a, a different deal, but of course you can now find these in your livestock operations and being able to trim hooves um, with these uh, tree pruners, initially what they were, but we can mark them as sheep uh, uh, foot trimmers and we'll maybe even put an extra markup on it and call it the answer. So I put this in here in terms of just quick preparation and again, I throw a lot of pictures up to kind of move through this and that's the way I think we can be able to provide just a little bit more information and allow us the flexibility so that we can answer a greater amount of questions here at the end. This is actually a fun picture. This is my, uh, my grandfather at the halter and my dad um, carting uh, legs on a Cordell sheep. That was the breed of choice as I grew up. Um, but uh, halter breaking first, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Keeping the head up, setting the legs square. And we'll talk about the positioning in the ring, grooming and fitting as we move forward, cleanliness, and most often there uh, that the hard work is appreciated by the judge because you be able to identify uh, those that uh, have worked a little bit harder with their operations. Dr. Hoffman, I have a quick question just to interrupt. You have an individual that has a hair sheep. Is there anything that you would recommend for the hair sheep? Question. The first thing that I would say uh, in terms of the hair sheep is to keep them clean as well. Um, depends on what, uh, what kind that you have. Uh, Katahdins oftentimes would leave um, some of the, the hair um, on them because they do have a more coat of hair. If you uh, have a dorper, um, it is more commonly accepted since that's hair and wool um, to shear those animals off. And so um, if they were breeding stock, uh, you could be able to leave it as just the hair that's on them. If it was a market animal, um, I would clip them down um, similar to what we would um, with a with a, uh, tighter so that uh, we can be able to, to see that muscle shape on a market animal if you so choose a hair sheep breed. So this is actually a, a picture that uh, that ewe lamb that's at side was one of them from uh, North Dakota State University. She went on actually to, uh, to win her class uh, at the National Columbia Sheep Show and Sale. And uh, I say that partly because uh, the more and more, uh, and in fact that lambs are being sold at this point early in the year, of whether that's uh, plenty of sales have happened and starting in February, March, now April, um, uh, but uh, you can be able to identify um, them, and I hope that you can look for skeletal and muscle, muscle conformation. So we know that that ewe lamb is very long-bodied. We know that she's very correct in terms of her feet and leg structure, even before that uh, uh, tail has, has fallen off at, at this point. In terms of muscle, you can be able to identify the amount of muscle shape that they have as you evaluate it from the top side of their shoulder, back to their raft, through the loin and through the uh, rear leg as well. And so the other thing that I look at in terms of young animals is truthfully look at uh, the rib cage, the roundness that we have in the rib cage, and also the base width. And so you can look in terms of uh, the feet and leg structure as you look at the front legs and as you look at the rear legs as they travel uh, and you evaluate them from behind to see true muscle shape and dimension. Then it's your job to work in terms of nutrition, average daily gain, and feed um, and fat composition to make sure that those don't stay too trim or more commonly uh, too fat uh, for our, our production and for our shows. Train your lamb to tie and to lead uh, with a halter. It doesn't have to be a nylon halter, but uh, and then you can transition to working with them um, without the halter prior to show. For young people, uh, and again, uh, Leanne showed that we have a very young audience uh, for us here today, is that those young people, um, feel free if you need experience, 
you know what, take that animal out there and, and have that halter on it. And that's okay. Um, it is for me because most importantly, I want you to have confidence out there and you can use it as a backup. If you just have it in your hand and are able to use just the hand and, the, and, and holding its head as well, you have something that provides a little bit more confidence, that'll be okay. So when you come out under me, the next time I'll say I'll challenge you, the next time do it without it. So just feel free to work through that um, as you uh, get better with your career and with your expertise. Of course, you can also lead your lamb uh, as part of your exercise program and then to train them to respond to your action. Working with them and trying to be able to improve them the best you can. So preparing your animal, and again, I didn't put a to-do list of 12 different points, and if there, you have any questions, I'm sure we'll share my contact information uh, if you wish to work with me or, or talk about more specific things. But we have some differences here, and. Uh, the young lady, I'll start in the middle there with the pink, and we'll show a couple of hers. This is actually a, a weather dam, okay, and so, or it could have been a market lamb, but uh, certainly a one on the a larger end. But you wash those, you transition and leave a little bit uh, from that knee and hock down that you can work with and be able to shape however you so wish. We have a, a Montedale on the top right. That one's clean. Uh, we can see that they washed that one um, and kept it clean. There's just a little bit of stains in the rear area, but for the most part, they did a great job of keeping that one clean, uh, used the blanket, um, and was able to fit that and make it really smooth. The bottom right one um, was actually uh, born and bred here in North Dakota. And that was a Supreme Champion U at Sedalia. Um, and so you can see a little bit of um, color variation on that one's body. And so what happened is that when you have a wool breed sheep is that there is a little bit of dirt you could trim a little bit of that um, dirt off or if you take more wool off primarily in the front one third of its body or on the sides you're going to have a little bit of differences you can be able to use dirts or natural portions or some potential paints um, that can be able to be used to color it more uniformly and in fact the couple that are on my far left portion there in the green box um, they have a Rambolet ram that was exhibited at Newell Ram Sale in South Dakota. And they worked hard enough to get that one shaped out early enough that you could see that that one all has the same color and it's come back um, and shown as well. So a little bit there in terms of just grooming and fitting um, and then also the, that hoof trimming. And so these are pictures of uh, the two most accomplished sheep in this calendar year or in 2019. The Supreme Champion Ram and U um, at the North American International Livestock Position in Louisville. Both of these are meat breed sheep, as I said, and so consequently uh, they were washed. Um, and you would want to do that certainly a, a, a extended period of time of even two weeks, three weeks uh, before the show, and you'll probably want to do it again. And here's the fun part. Okay, Leanne, this is an exciting thing is that as a livestock uh, fitter, if you so have breeding sheep, you get to shape them in whatever way that you that wool allows you. And so you get to be an artist or an artiste if it makes it sound even more intriguing. So you have that opportunity to shape those to identify the faults. Now the difference is as we move on to our market sheep is that part of the things that we now have is that we now have a slick shorn animal. And so that's where showmanship becomes even more important because we can be able to then have to work on our way to help um, identify those weaknesses and strengths. So with these, these are washed and these are fitted and you know, a wool card and the hand clippers are used more often than some people would prefer in their lives. Um, and then also in terms of just hoof trimming, um, that should probably be done uh, in my personal opinion, two to three weeks beforehand, um, because that allows us the opportunity that if we do make a mistake, uh, that that hoof can grow back, because the last thing that we want with our uh, with our shiny animal is the one that's, that's limping and, and getting out there. Talk a little bit about um, the market lambs as well. And in fact, here's one that would be considered something similar in terms of presentation as we finish out that grooming and fitting portion, is that this is a young lady it has as exhibiting a Southtown um, U and was part of a division winner there at Louisville this past year. 
So one of the things that we did there, or she did, is that we, of course, we washed it. We used a fine tooth, okay, um, comb. And so the more teeth that there are in those combs, the tighter it gets, the smoother that flip job fits, fit it to the skin. And there are those options to be able to uh, use that. And then uh, the South Downs in general will leave some wool uh, over its muzzle and from the knee down and from the hock down. And, and those of you that have Hampshire or Hampshire influenced uh, market lambs also have some wool um, from the lower part of the body down um, to be able to be shaped or be able to be used and kind of provide a little bit stouter of a bone work. Some shows will not allow um, extra wool on the belly line. So be careful that if you so uh, follow those rules, uh, some people try to make them a little bit deeper flanked. Um, other places may try to make them look a little bit shallower chested. Um, and, and some of those places may or may not uh, disqualify you from using um, exterior paints, okay, or, or artificial paints and, and colorings um, for those animals. And so from an integrity standpoint, you know, uh, Monodales are supposed to have black noses, South Downs are supposed to, okay. Um, we, we, it's best in terms of integrity to make sure that we, uh, we just follow home-based rules and, and, uh, and fit what we can and, and not alter any of the colorings artificially. And more importantly, um, from a market lamb standpoint is that we don't alter any of the musculature or skin or hide or any of the features because there are practices that happen and are currently happening and previously happening uh, that are uh, lacking in terms of integrity of being able to produce uh, true market animals. Leanne, I'm interested in providing uh, an idea and seeing uh, what, where we're at in terms of showmanship experience. That is a fantastic idea. So I just launched another poll. If you can go ahead and select what or how many years you have been showing sheep in showmanship. And so we can just get an idea. Um, I have a couple questions while you guys are doing polls for Dr. Hoffman. Um, Gloria had asked, what measurements would be recommended to feed your lamb? Do you want to touch a little bit on that? Um, in terms of, of measurements, each of those individuals um, can, can be able to be evaluated. But I think that um, a couple things that, that can potentially either get overlooked is that if we so choose a complete feed, then that allows us uh, the advantage. Um, and in working with those nutritionists, I would say that potentially about five pounds, um, and so between three to five pounds um, of feeds allows them the opportunity. We can guess that um, from a feed to gain, uh, those animals would be somewhere at six, seven, or eight uh, in terms of pounds of feed um, per of gain and so those actually depends on where your timeline is. I really think that animals should be able to gain between a, a half of a pound to a pound of feed or pound of gain uh, per day and so if we provide approximately about um, four to five pounds of at least feeds uh, stuffs uh, to those um, those and also I like to think if they aren't complete feeds or and if we have maybe just a corn and oats and concentrate that you do allow a little bit of fiber um, or a little bit of, of higher quality alfalfas as well uh, so that you can be able to uh, to keep that rumen going because we often have to think that we do have a, a ruminant animal and uh, that that's a part of their world as well. Uh, Mr. Rick Schmidt, what would you like to add in terms of nutrition and, and uh, home base ideas? Well, I think it's really important to know what kind of animal that you're feeding to. Um, you know, I guess if it's a market lamb, then you've got, uh, obviously you want to keep those animals, uh, you know, on a, on a, a, a nice complete feed that uh, is going to keep their coat looking really good. I think sometimes making sure that you have enough minerals in there to cover uh, all the nutritional re requirements is, is important. Um, you know, and if you get into the breeding sheep, sometimes a little bit more hay would be fine. Um, it, it's going to give them a little bit more fill to their middle. But um, really, I think it's dependent upon uh, which class that you're wanting to participate in. And, 
you know, I guess the other part is, is that what's your animal look like? What are its faults? And what would you like to correct in its condition? And so that might indicate how much roughage versus uh, what we uh, might feed as far as uh, roughage in relationship to uh, a, a nice complete feed that comes from a, a, a dealer that's designed for what your, what your end goal is uh, in showing that particular animal. Thank you guys. We're gonna go ahead and keep on rolling. For those of you, we are recording your questions in the chat box. So things about different breeds and stuff, we will definitely touch on those here shortly. So, all right, thank you. All right, thank you, Leanne. We're uh, a half an hour into uh, this evening's um, presentation on showmanship. And uh, we just got the opportunity to, uh, to show uh, some pen placement. And uh, Leanne, if you'll confirm that we've moved to the correct slide for everybody to be able to evaluate, is that correct? That is correct. All right, and we had a great actual distribution um, of people of whether they were one year in or two or three or, or even more experienced. So I think that you have a couple opportunities and uh, as you walk into the ring, uh, there's easily the fact that, that uh, there's first impressions no matter what. Now I will tell you uh, as, uh, as an evaluator or a judge that most commonly I'm, I'm probably, um, you know, and, and it's just human nature that you've already made a decision about a person of whether they're gonna be competitive, maybe they're gonna be competitive or they aren't. Uh, within the first five to ten steps within the ring. So that first impression is extremely important and we'll show that a little bit in terms of the video uh, as well. One of the things that is, is also really um, kind of, a, kind of a, a big helpful part for me, identifying how to place that head. And so we have some examples here and so the first young lady that's farthest to the left, I'm going to walk through these, this trio from left to right, so the young lady that's the farthest on the left uh, is holding it in a pretty ideal location uh, for me. Uh, that neck is going perpendicular up and at a 90 degree angle. Uh, the front legs and the rear legs are, are correct in terms of where they are underneath that animal. And there's a little bit of a brace uh, for that one. So I like how that one, the head placement uh, is. Of course, the judge is farther away and so that's just fine. The young lady that's in the middle um, does have that head um, and neck carriage going up. Um, but the challenge is, is that um, a couple different things. The nose is tilted up a little bit and some people uh, like to do that. I don't prefer it certainly at that level. And uh, I've been guilty as well of trying to keep the ears up. Maybe you think it makes it look, uh, the neck look more extended. But in fact, here, I think it just looks a little goofy. And so the ears are a little pointed up too much straight uh, to the air. And in fact, the young lady there that has the, um, the pink shirt and the speckle face feather, this is actually where it was fighting her. This isn't normally how that lamb would have been um, presented. But when it did, here its nose is pointing to the top. And I think of it this way, and for those uh, uh, young people that are, are showing, is that if I grab you by the ears, point your nose to the ceiling, and then put a hand in your chest, you're probably not going to want to put back push back and so that's what we're asking that lamb to do is his head is pointed to the stop the stars the nose is pointed up and then their knee is still in there of trying to get that lamb to brace and so probably not the best approach relative to uh to head placement that we could be able to accomplish um with with her approach so heads up is again doing this right young lady has a columbia u on the left um and she's doing a nice job uh, she has her fingers, uh, her index finger underneath the ear uh, for that animal. And so that brings that up. Uh, it's close enough that you can still have it for the most part uh, at the cheeks. And so we can be able to see uh, the neck and doing a good job. Uh, for entertainment value in the back, if you dig and look just a little bit deeper, uh, we've got, uh, you know, a, a six-year-old gentleman that's got the sheep hanging out about ready to run away or at least going in forward. And the gentleman uh, in front of him has the nose pointed up. And so luckily for uh, pictures that I took at North Dakota State Fair, uh, I picked the right one to provide some clarity for. So I got lucky on that one. Um, the trio of individuals uh, that we have next in line, I'm going to start with the gentleman uh, with the Wolverine Chief, the Columbia at the front. Um, so he's doing a, a solid job as well. One of the things is, is that his hand, if you, his left hand is closer to under its throat and not just under the jawline. 
you can potentially cause challenges if they resist that a little bit and if they uh, are not, um, if they potentially choke, okay, that'd be a problem if there was too much pressure. But I appreciate that he has control through his left hand. He has his right hand at the back of the neck so that if there was a problem, um, that he would be able to have it under control. The rear legs, uh, sometimes in junior shows or open shows, you can have somebody to help you if you so choose. So his brother is there at the back end evaluating the rear legs and I'll have to give him a, a bonus pointer and say, yes, please move one or the other um, to make that one a, a little bit uh, wider in terms of its stance, but um, hopefully they can work in terms of teamwork. Maybe I just caught him at a bad time. Young lady with a Dorset sheep's in the middle. Um, again, a white washed breed there. And so she has her hands more so uh, underneath the ears. If it was up to me, I would move those back just a little bit closer to um, the muzzle and the cheek area, uh, but she has certainly good control of that one. And the young lady's got a Hampshire sheep next in line. And if I was to guess which of this trio of ewes was the tamest, I'd bet it's that third one. She's only got her hand under the uh, jaw and uh, feels confident about it. Her right hand is over the top of uh, the back of the sheep. I consider that just a little bit of a distraction. So I don't need any need for that uh, being there. And it certainly doesn't provide you the help that it would if it was on the back of the neck uh, like the first gentleman's is. So a little bit here in terms of evaluations. And again, the young lady on the left uh, that I highlighted there um, does a tremendous job. The ears are up. Um, but they're not pointed towards the sky. Back it is up at a 90 degree angle um, and allowing that nose to kind of drape and drop over your elbow or your forearm. So a few people here uh, with different levels of experience uh, to be able to evaluate. And I appreciate all of our youth that we have in North Dakota. Um, if you're watching this, hopefully you can be able to evaluate that you did some things correct and we can improve on some as well. So hopefully not to be a negative by any means. The young man that's nearest uh, um, or that's in the back um, um, with the with the polypay type sheep there um, kind of has the bear hug going on. Um, and that's okay. Okay, trust me, there's pictures of me somewhere. Uh, I know there are um, where I was working the bear hug as well. And it was a, a little bit more experience as we kind of get a little bit better. I'll open that up so that we can see uh, that neck and that front end a little bit more. The young lady's got a Suffolk sheep. She's got her left hand under the jaw, and in fact, um, her right hand is right at the top of, or the point of its shoulder. She's doing a super good job in terms of presenting a large animal, but in fact, for me, she could kind of shift that head back and make it just a little bit more perpendicular, that help us. And then the young lady that's uh, a little bit shorter on experience right now, kind of just pulling that head towards her. Uh, you can see just kind of draping it over the leg. Similar as we move to the bottom row of people, Young lady's kind of just pulling that lamb with her over its leg. We'd want to just kind of crank that up, make it a little bit more perpendicular on the top side. Young lady in the middle there, again, the nose is a little bit more cranked up than I'd ideally like. And then the young man uh, is posing for us. In fact, uh, that was after some championship pictures. He's doing a good job in terms of presenting that one. But we can draw that head and neck back, just make it a little bit more attractive uh, in terms of how it's uh, set in there. Say, Dr. Hoffman. You um, are showing a lot of sheep here that look like they've been worked with quite a bit and that they're uh, liking to be shown. Randomly, we see lambs that are either ticklish or fighting the exhibitor or kind of jumping around when the judge comes to handle them. Do you have any secrets for our audience on how to uh, address a misbehaving lamb? Okay, so if they're, if they're jumping, all right, uh, a, a couple things that we can, we can try to do is that um, if we can, um, a, a lot of the times there's may or may not be reasons for them to jumping. And so one of the things that first comes to mind in terms of that jumping is that how tight of a hole do I have on that head? How tight of a hole do I have it on that, on that, um, even, even the muzzle or the neck. Um, and so be careful to not, um, strain that animal by lifting its head up too much or pointing its head too hard, high to the ground. So that's one of the things I want to evaluate because you may be causing added stresses for them. The second thing is that I feel as though if you have a hold of the head with your left hand is that you can be able to put your right hand potentially on the top of the shoulder. So if that animal is going to jump, 
you at least know what's going to happen because you can kind of feel the body move and move back and forth and then potentially jump and so that you can be able to be there. If you just trying to do it with your front hand um, and you don't have your other hand back there to help or assist you, um, then you may be the one not with the jumping lamb, you may be the one that has to uh, have the ring man or ring woman come help you to catch your sheep. So primarily evaluate how you're holding that head, to see if there's anything that you can improve and relax a little bit. Animals respond to you, and respond to your calmness. And so hopefully we can be calm and to be able to uh, make those improvements. I'll try to keep moving, Dr. Skirpe. Uh, we've got uh, the front view to provide access for the judge, the view of the front of the third of the animal. So you can see that the judge is coming by, the young gentleman here, rocking the white shirt with 4-H clover like we roll um, here. Um, that judge, we don't know where he was prior to where this picture was taken, if he was behind him, in front of him, wherever it may be. He did, but this gentleman's in a good spot right now. Um, and so that judge can be able to see that front one third of its body. But in fact, the more challenging thing for me is when people move from one side to the other, right when the judge is looking. I prefer that if you're going to move, which I'm okay with and, and prefer, but make sure you don't do it while the judge is looking and get out of the way. And so um, you can be able to hopefully do that fluently and efficiently. The young lady that has uh, uh, the, uh, the market ewe lamb absolutely does it perfect for me. Hands are at the cheeks, okay, the head is up. I can see everything that I want um, and that uh, is a great presentation. The legs are a little wider than maybe what we need. But other than that, uh, it's no reason to uh, to consider that that isn't the answer. We're going to shift a little bit to bracing of those animals. It's important to get that best look possible on the side profile. As these are, these are three individual pictures. That, um, apparently with my editing, hey, it looks like they're just in a line. So we'll just call it a win. How exciting. So um, the young lady that's uh, farthest to the left, and we'll work through these again, left to right. Young lady that's uh, at the left, this is that speckle face weather that had his nose too high in the air. Guess what? He does again. His feet and legs are ab absolutely in the right place. He's got a brace in um, with this, with the inside of her left leg. And now you will see with her right hand, she's going over the top line uh, to the middle of the loin. And so she knows that this lamb kind of gets a little higher in its loin when you brace it. And if you can decrease that or allow that one to not brace at the same level, Kind of keep that top line down. She knows what she's doing. She's trying to correct the bolt from that animal. The young lady that's in the second spot here um, with the, the blue lamb, again, she's got the pressure on the inside of her left leg. Um, but I like to think of bracing as a zero to 100 scale. And this is just me. I don't know. Not many people probably think this way, but um, I think that this lamb is bracing at maybe 20%, maybe 30 at the most. Because the way I see its head, it's pointed up to the top, its neck it looks unnatural. There's no flare in its leg and no shape, and it doesn't appear to be pushing off of its rear legs. To me, the rear leg set um, isn't as preferred as we'd uh, ideally like. And so we have some challenges. That lamb is probably not bracing as much as we'd ideally like, particularly if we were going to get um, a handle on that one. The young lady um, here in third, Okay, this lamb is bracing even less, okay? And so a couple of reasons of why I see that. And when I look at the angle of the front legs, the angles of the front legs are pointed way too far towards um, the front um, or, or too extended. And so you can see the angle is no longer perpendicular to the ground. And since it's not perpendicular to the ground, I feel as though that lamb is kind of pulling back. It's not pushing back into her leg. And that lamb is kind of pulling back. You're not going to get... Um, as preferred of a handle as maybe you would um, like for those animals. So when we are evaluating the over bracing of the lambs, um, I said that you want to, uh, to brace those animals. If you are over bracing them, um, you will do some things wrong and, um, for those animals. And one of those things is, is that um, the bottom right uh, picture is that that one in the bottom right really has most things going wrong in my opinion. That one's nose is going too high. The stress and the angles are at the back of that animal's head. Um, we, we can kind of see it there. Um, the, the 
gate causes a little bit of challenge, but at the hip loin junction, it's breaking. The right rear leg is too far back. That's just simply uh, making a good animal into a poor animal. The advantage is, is that there, as I talked about, the hip loin junction is the, the young lady that has uh, the judge is handling that one. That's about where we would be able to evaluate the hip loin um, structure for those animals, uh, or just a little bit behind that. And in fact, the young gentleman here has already claimed a win uh, in the FFA show and, and un certainly has a nice lamb, but he's not helping it in terms of showmanship because this one, when he puts his weight and, and power into this lamb, uh, you can see there um, that it breaks at the hip loin and it certainly doesn't give that nearly as good of a look as you possibly can. We often have challenges of, of people that want to push too hard. And so you have to work with those animals to identify what is too much or where, where do I need to be of, of working with those animals on, uh, on zero or, or of, from going to no brace to getting into a brace. And, and certainly no one will tell you that 100% brace is the answer anymore because you want to go in and keep your animal in a, a good composition. Here's three great photos that shows the evaluating over the front forerib, uh, handling the loin, and then handling the um, hip and hind leg as well. All three of these individuals are doing a tremendous job in the handling of those animals and doing a great um, job of, of the transition uh, from that standpoint. Hey, Dr. Hoffman. Yes. We just had a question. Can you kind of uh, talk about maybe some things you can do if they're bracing too hard? So um, I would say, one of the things that I would say would be to take your knee and your pressure off of that um, front part of its shoulder. The other thing is uh, that some find advantageous is that you um, can hold the uh, animal under the cheeks or under that muzzle, okay, and under the jaw and just kind of shift them back a little bit. So push their head back a little bit, get them to shift their weight um, back to underneath them and then so you kind of get a restart and then you can then push back in and start and then have contact with the inside of your left leg um, at that one's breastplate and then just start to ease into that lamb and it might be at 25 percent it might be at 50 percent that, that that lamb looks the best of whatever that may be and then you just wait until you need more of when the judge is going to handle it that you put more emphasis on it. Dakota 4-H Sheep Showmanship Educational Video. This video is designed to assist youth in learning the proper practices to become more competitive when exhibiting sheep. This video is a visual supplement to the North Dakota 4-H Livestock Showmanship Guide, publication GB092. Your first impressions are powerful, so begin strong. From the time the show starts, give the judge the appearance that you're in the show ring to win. Be confident in your mannerisms while remaining calm and relaxed. Showmanship starts from the time that you walk into the ring. Before entering the ring, you may want to know the patterns that the judge will be using throughout the show. Most judges will use the same pattern throughout. As you enter the ring, lead your animal from the left side of the lamb. Your left hand is under the jaw, not on the throat of the animal. Your right hand is placed at the back of the head with your thumb and pointer finger placed just behind the ears. This will give you more control when requesting your animal to move forward. Usually you will walk in a clockwise manner. If the judge wants you to lead in a circle or lead in line, the judge's preference is that you will do so quickly without any resistance from your animal. If the leading around the circle, the judge is looking for how well the animal responds to your commands. Know when and where to stop. This is usually indicated by the judge or the ring steward. When requested to stop, make sure that you're in line. 
whether the line is a head to tail or side by side. Once you stop in line, immediately set your animal's feet. The feet should be set squarely, yet comfortably beneath the animal. You may fix the top line or any other qualities which should be addressed at this time. Once your animal is in a position to where you want the judge to view it, find the judge while remaining one eye on your animal in the event that it may move, as well as one eye on the judge so you know where they're at. The judges traditionally will arrange the animals in a way to give the spectators the best view of the animals. If lined up head to tail or in a line, you'll want to place this line away from the spectators to avoid any obstructions. And when lined up side by side, give the view of the rear view of the animals to the spectators. For breeding sheep, keep the nose up. The nose and face should be flat. Always assure that the feet are set squarely and wide enough underneath of both ends of the animal. For market lambs, set the feet square, wide enough while remaining comfortable. It is acceptable to lift the front legs off the ground long enough to set the front legs side by side. If you are going to lift the front end of the lamb, do it quickly and discreet and then place the lamb's feet back to the ground. Set the hind right leg by reaching over top of the lamb. Brace the market lambs by having the lamb push forward into the thigh of the exhibitor. Keep the lamb's head up high while keeping the face flat and the neck and head and back of the sheep should all be at a 90 degree angle to give the best view of the animal. The feet need to stay on the ground. However, bracing should be done but not lifting during showmanship. Excessive showing, lifting of the lambs, Pulling too hard on the head or neck takes away from the two true qualities of the animal. The hip and loin areas have a tendency to become weaker while they resist the exhibitor, which also takes away eye appeal and some of the showing and showmanship qualities of the exhibitor, which is what the judge is really looking for during showmanship. We want you to be competitive, but do not overshow your animal. If you line up side by side, again, as soon as you stop, set your animal up in a way that you want the judge to see it. Make sure that you're in line with the first animal in line. Once you're in line, know where the judge is at. Give the judge the best view of your animal. Keep your animal between you and the judge. The exhibitor may move to either side of the animal. If the judge is on the left side of your animal, the exhibitor is on the right. If the judge is behind or to the right of your animal, the exhibitor is on the left side of the animal. This positioning is the same when leading. Lead your animal from the opposite side of where the judge is. It is more natural to lead lambs from the left side. However, judges may have you lead from the right just to see if you're moving from side to side correctly. Anytime you're moving from side to side, never go around the back of the lamb and never turn your back to the lamb when moving around the front of the, the sheep. When moving from side to side, do it naturally. Not abruptly so it may startle your animal or the animals of the other exhibitors in the show ring. Do not move your animal unless requested by the judge. Once you're in line, don't be parading your animal out or resetting it unless absolutely necessary. This is an indication that the animal is not well trained and responding to the commands of the exhibitor. When the animals are in line, 
the judges may have youth move to a new position in line. When asked, lead the animal forward, turn your animal, come back to the same position which you had just left, then to the new position requested by the judge. While moving, remember to always keep the animal between you and the judge. You can move from left to right, or right to left of the animal, but never go behind the animal. Showmanship is about how well you show your animal. The first priority is to make the sheep look the best that it possibly can. To make it look its best comes from exhibitors who always make sure to set the animal up quickly. The judge is also looking for animals that respond to the commands of the exhibitor without much fuss. Attentiveness of the exhibitor to the request of the judge is important. Respond professionally and timely. Be alert and never get over relaxed. The show may get long, but you need to remain showing at, your, at the top of your game throughout the show. The fitting or shearing of the animal is also important. We want to make sure that the animals are well represented and presented in a very professional manner. However, remember that this is a youth show and youth should be doing most of the preparation. Professional fit jobs should be given no advantage during showmanship. However, things within the control of the exhibitor such as how clean the animal is, the ear tags are they clean, the ears and the hooves are all things that can be done prior to entering a showmanship contest. Dress code for the sheep exhibitors is an appropriate shirt with the 4-H emblem, dark jeans, a belt, and hard-soled shoes. Also make sure that the clothes are clean. The exhibitors need to be well-groomed. No hat or uncombed hair. Ladies should have hair that is well-managed so it does not fall into their face during the exhibition. Questions are also fair game in any showmanship contest. Common questions may be, when was your animal born? What are you feeding your animal? What is your animal's weight? If you were to change your animal in any way to make it more competitive, what will it be? These are examples of strengths or faults in which your animal may have. How confidently and accurately you answer the questions may add points to your showmanship score. Showmanship is about character building. Sheep are a great way to learn about the livestock industry and build life skills. It is also about having fun and building lifelong relationships. So enjoy the experience and enjoy the show. Okay, Dr. Scrippe, can you uh, hear me and see a slideshow? We sure can. All right, and so. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening to that. And in fact, uh, we'll show the location uh, where you can be able to uh, to grab that as well. And thank you to uh, Mr. Rick Schmidt and, and his group at uh, Oliver County Extension at NDSU for uh, helping to provide that for us for a resource. I just got a couple slides and uh, I will allow us uh, the opportunity to take some exciting questions. So that'll be good. Um, and the first one here is a, a Cordale Yearling U. Uh, the young gentleman uh, has his hands kind of so that the just uh, at the cheeks, you can be able to allow that nose to drop. Um, the ears, he's up a little bit. If we were to be too critical of this one, maybe the rear legs could be just a little bit wider, um, but they're square and underneath there, and it might have took two of them to get it done, but they got it, and they, uh, I think, did a pretty good job of presenting um, that yearling you. And then this is one of our uh, showmen that we've had in here several times, and and in fact, here's the time that she smokes it and gets it uh, dead right from the side profile. The pressure's on the back of its ears. You allow those ears to come up just a little bit. Still drop that nose into your forearm or elbow. The rear legs are right on. If you guys are okay with it, I think these two individuals did a nice job here to transition us 
back into the game and finish up strong uh, here with our presentation. So I don't know what the correct answer is in terms of describing this because each person is a little bit different. Now, uh, and, and I just described this slide as intensity. Um, and, and again, from game on to eye contact and attention to sheep and, and just doing some things that we can be able to accomplish. Now, of those of you that are watching uh, know the, the young lady on the left, uh, that's the most intense showman that I know in the region and, uh, and she's ready to go, okay? And so uh, her lamb, uh, even though the front legs maybe aren't as set up as ideal as we need right now, um, she's got her attention on the judge. She'll be working on trying to get that animal up and get it presented as, as best she can. The two ladies, I have to give a, a little bit of, of condolence that I took this picture uh, before the judge was in the ring. And so uh, it wasn't just that uh, their lack of intensity, but right now, at least at this point, um, uh, their, their attention certainly isn't quite on the sheep and let alone is it on the judge of what they're trying to accomplish, but just a little bit of thoughts of how we can be a little bit better. Where do you want to put your emphasis in terms of accomplishing it? A fun one or maybe the one of the more intriguing questions is, is the smiling. And in fact, some people of whether it's your parents or um, an extension agent or a leader that says, go out there and smile. And if you are enjoying yourself, I know that you're enjoying yourself. But I also know some people that will go out there and they won't smile because they're in it to play and, and to do as best they can. So if it's natural for you, that's fine. But I will tell you as a judge, there is nothing cornier than somebody that's doing a fake smile out there pretending uh, that they're enjoying themselves. And so take note to that 4-H leaders. If that's a problem for you, my apologies. But uh, it makes it weird being out there in terms of people that are fake smiling for us. So confidence is one of the last things. And, and these two people, you've seen them at both times and you've seen them uh, do good work and you've seen them do uh, places where they can be a little bit better. Again, most of these were from uh, the North Dakota State Fair that I grabbed from some pictures in 4-H, FFA, and in a little bit in the open class. But both of these two young ladies are ready to win showmanship. That sheep on the right is, is much bigger than she would prefer. Um, and uh, the young lady's got her market ewe lamb uh, ready to go. But you know your animal better, okay? And that's when some judges will switch an animal to a different person. Um, and so it makes it tougher. You have to now evaluate that animal and determine how that one can get better and how you can set up the legs and hold the head up, walk at a steady pace, okay? And so you know the strengths and weaknesses uh, make sure you're doing your job in terms of showmanship because that's really what it's about. In fact, showmanship is obviously not just going in for showmanship class. Anytime you walk in the ring, we want you to be smooth. We want you to provide the best options that you can. Here's a couple of fun pictures that I got to be part of. Uh, the gentleman there is uh, just a little, uh, between three and four years of age um, right there showing at the National Western Stock Show. Uh, that lamb actually, that South Down uh, Ram actually grew up and one is class at Sedalia. We didn't know that at, at uh, approximately 10 days of age. And here's a good friend of mine, Abigail Donkers, that um, does, does, does a great job and, and had done a great job. This is, I believe, her last year showing at the Minnesota State Fair. And so she worked with Dorsets, trained those to work with them um, and to be able to lead with her and, and did a tremendous job. Never ever think that there's limits in terms of what you can accomplish. And um, I would, be welcoming to some questions and answers that we have. Um, and so for entertainment value, I put a little bit in there of what I got to uh, sort some livestock at Louisville and when I was an eight-year-old. And then this past year's old school, um, not because it's black and white, but because that's a Hampshire sheep in the United Kingdom. And so um, my moderators and Dr. Scrape and those that have been talented, I would welcome uh, questions um, as they fit uh, and, and are presented from our talented audience. Thank you so much if you have to leave us. Uh, we really, really, really appreciate you being a part of it. And uh, feel free to contact me. Um, my phone number is 701-231-BA. So 701-231-BA. Or um, also via email at travis.w.hoffman at ndsu.edu. So I will open it up for questions. Uh, I don't get to see that chat box, but I know there's been a lot of action and we'll do our best. Thank you. Dr. Hoffman, I'm going to kick it off first because I had a private question that perhaps um, Kurt and Brian didn't get to 
record. So Gloria was asking, what angle do you want their rear legs to have? I don't know if you want to go back to a picture to show what's ideal or not, but that was a great question. Okay, so um, great question. Sorry, now I'm going through um, too many of them. So this one uh, that is currently up, that bottom one is way too extended, all right? Um, and, and this is a, a good example, all right? And so, um, and in fact, the girl that's in the middle, um, those are a little bit farther up underneath them than what I would prefer. And so I'm gonna go back to, um, sorry, thanks for the question but I am going to go to this because those are as correct as this young lady can make that one. All right, and so I knew there was a good reason to put this uh, picture in here. Um, and some may say, are they a little bit too far back? To me, they're not um, because that angle is still just fine because the, from the hock um, to the pastern and down um, are still at a, at a good angle in my personal opinion. Dr. Hoffman, Dr. Hoffman, we're going to go way back uh, early in your presentation. There was a question. In your opinion, what is the best way to make a good impression on the judge quickly? Okay, good. So um, I think that a, a couple things. So uh, you're obviously going to have eye contact with the judge to begin with, but totally for me it's the head and neck carriage of how you're holding that animal and so uh again i'm uh i was lucky enough uh, to be born uh with a, a short with a, a few uh, fingers and so that's okay it wasn't a problem for me but what i did and what i really like is that if you have your hands up uh cradled under the jaw and then your hands at the um the, at the cheeks okay we know that we have that animal, it's wanting to go, and I keep that head up and perpendicular and then just let it go at a, at a relatively efficient pace to get into the ring. And so, again, it's how do you catch their opinion? It's, it's those first five to ten steps in. I want that head and neck to be coming out. And the other thing that you will see now is more judges are placing animals uh, on the move, and that's just because they're evaluating skeletal correctness more. And so being able to keep your animal to, uh, to be alert. And so sometimes those animals will just fall asleep a little bit. And if you get a little bit of fire to them and just kind of tap them on the, on the rib cage or side, but be careful on that. I don't want to go too far because there's few things less exciting than if you decide to slap or hurt or um, abuse any animals by anything. And I should never hear, let alone see, um, uh, a person's hand uh, attacking a, an animal. So keep that head up, crank that up, and then set the legs when you get to the side profile as efficiently as you can. Next question, Dr. Hoffman. Uh, an individual asks, is it okay if I dye my hair? And so uh, with dyed hair. Quit laughing at me, though. <laughs> okay, so um, is it okay if I dye my hair? Um, I hope that I will go through the chat box and, and uh, consider that maybe this is an entertaining one. Um, if you're, you know, plenty of ladies um, primarily prefer to go a little blonder or a little darker, that's your so choice. If you so choose to use purple or green, or whatever that may be, um, that's your personal decision. Um, my job is not supposed to be to be able to evaluate you in terms of, of fashion um, of either what you're wearing. And that's why North Dakota on a dress code has chosen to allow that it's primarily only um, strict colored shirts is so that everybody's on a similar playing field. Um, you know, if, if if, uh, if green hair is you, then, then you be you, okay? Uh, I, am, I can't, um, uh, I guess, uh, squelch somebody's creativity, Kurt, um, but I hope uh, somebody, um, either, either that's uh, their idea or whatever it may be. Now, in terms of shirts um, and just dress code, if you were outside of the 4-H game, man, I always wore the brightest, snappiest shirt I could. So I guess I didn't dye my hair, but 
I mean, I want to be confident going in there. And if you aren't squelched, uh, like at the Oklahoma Youth Expo or whatever, everybody has to be wearing certain things, uh, certain 4-H or FFA or Minnesota. They have designated uh, T-shirts that everybody's wearing. Um, but, you know, if I'm going down to win Louisville and Junior Show, I had the poppinest teal shirt that I knew. So, anyway. Hey, Dr. Hoffman. We have one more question um, that I asked privately is, what is the best feed to be feeding your sheep, and what's a good time to start feed? Awesome. Uh, I do not uh, particularly answer that one in terms of the best feed. Um, so uh, there's, there's too many uh, nutrition companies that I work with, and I am not willing to, uh, to particularly answer that one. What the difference is is to identify – um, what feeds there are available in terms of nutrition, but primarily, um, like I said, the protein um, and a higher protein uh, complete feed at the beginning and, and then trend that down to a lower part so you can kind of fill in the hip point junction, maybe just get a little bit more freshness to that animal. Um, so, and then the other part was um, when to start feeding. You should, those animals, um, uh, even when they are on the U or, or born, you know, after they get uh, two, three weeks of age, um, we uh, at North Dakota State University offer those sheep soybean meal uh, just as a supplement uh, from the mother's milk. And so you have the opportunity, uh, if you were to purchase them, uh, that they should go on feeds as, as they can. I will tell you that some of those uh, more bag feeds are no doubt more expensive. Um, and so if you were able to work with a feed mill or a nutrition person, and the other thing that I would tell you with that is that there are people in your county, uh, that no matter where you're at, that do show some um, sheep and lambs. And so what I would do is I would try to reach out to them. Uh, you don't want to be intimidated um, by any means. And most people are willing to share some things and, and want others to succeed. Nobody that's a winner at the county fair, the state fair, the national fair wants there to not be anybody there. So they want you to be involved. And I would say to work with people that are either club leaders um, or people that are in the sheep program uh, to identify a feed program that can work in your area. Because there's so many different feeds and feedstuffs and resources um, that you could mix up. You know, I mean, we can have plenty of different options that could be in uh, different feeds. And so I, I apologize that I answered that one only at a, a halfway level of your preference, but that's how we got to do this. Dr. Hoffman, before we take some more questions from Brian and Kirk, can you advance to that last page with all the other information on it so those that are getting ready to leave can see what other showmanship series we have coming up and Thank then the certainly reminder. have uh, some contact information if they have any other further questions while we're finishing up. Oh, go back one more. There we go. Perfect. Okay, Dr. Hoffman, I have some rapid fire questions, type <laughs> questions for you. I will try to be concise. Can I move to the right side of the sheep when I'm showing it? Yes, I am fine with that. Um, primarily our job is to show off that animal. And so the, I always start and you do too, uh, young showman, um, by being on the left side of the animal. Um, but my key point here is, um, and, and if the judge, if the judge is on, okay, so we're all looking forward and the judge is on my left side, I've already switched to the right side of the animal. Okay, and if they're coming to view the front, uh, I'm already on the right side and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and he's looking at the animal in front of me, he's looking at my animal, he's looking at the one behind me and then he's looking one more down now I can switch back to the left-hand side. Or if I started on the left-hand side, step back so that I can um, be able to um, show that front of it and then wait for an animal, wait for an animal, okay, and now switch. Because the, one of my pet peeves there is it's good to switch, but you don't want to do it right when you're evaluating it. And maybe I'm um, more uh, lenient in terms of being on either side because I'm left-handed, but um, you have to work with what works best for you. I am a small show person. In the video, it talked about reaching over the top to set the hind legs. I cannot reach over the top. I am too small. I am only eight years old. What do I do? 
Uh, I could not reach over the top either, okay? Um, so that's okay. Um, yes, in the video, it did say reaching over the top. I do not have a personal preference um, in terms of going over the top. I am just fine um, with being able to particularly um, grab the, uh, the rear legs that are on my side um, underneath the sheep. I will tell you, though, as a young show person, all right, so don't tell anybody on this one, but um, it is okay to use your foot when you are seven years old and have a yearling Hampshire you, okay? So what you're actually going to want to do is if, if you can't reach over the top, and I don't expect you to, is that you can try to crouch down and be able to reach with your right hand. But if that's not the case either, there's plenty of people in the beginner division that you have two things that you can be able to use as a, a resource. The first one is holding the head and pulling it forward or pushing it back. And so you're allowing that body weight to either move forward or backward. Hopefully that animal will square up. And if it didn't work or if I have three out of the four and I need to move the front leg and I know it's a long ways down there, it is okay to use your um, foot if you so wish. Please don't consider that um, the answer. But you know what? I would prefer that you showed effort to try to improve your animal than to just leave it. What will happen if my sheep gets away from me in the ring? How will the judge respond to me? Kurt, I'm glad that you asked your own question. Okay, so um, with that, so we want this to be a learning experience, okay? And so the opportunity is, is that we, there will be people hopefully in the ring that can help you to corral that animal and to get your animal back in line. Your job is to finish as strong as you can, okay? Did something bad happen? Absolutely. Did something bad happen in life for people right now? Okay, probably so. And so our job is to show some perseverance, to finish strong, and the judge potentially, um, and I've, I do this and many others, um, will acknowledge you at the end before you go out and say, you know what, young man, young woman, uh, thanks for your hard work and finishing strong and helping to be part of this, okay? Will you win showmanship that, that week or that time? chances aren't the best um but i want you to get better and to work out there and a lot of times i will like if an animal if a beef animal would step on somebody's toe or if a sheep gets loose i want to at least acknowledge that hopefully you still have a positive experience and can um and want to be out there when you do it again my sheep is not behaving very properly when i'm in line side by side or head to tail and I need to move it. Is it okay to turn my sheep in a circle to reset it? Yes, uh, good question. Uh, sorry I didn't accomplish all this. Um, uh, I am just fine. Um, turn into the animal. Do not pull the animal around you. And in fact, I didn't do a, a good job of moving from one spot to the other spot is pull forward. Like if you were side by side, you would pull forward, turn into the animal, and then go back through that hole and turn into the animal one more time and you're back in. If you're on the side profile, it is just fine to take a, uh, a quick lap that allows you to reset, but make sure that you get square. Oftentimes too many people like to sit themselves out front and try to be the center of attention and, and over showing at that point doesn't do you any good. Get back into line, but yes, that allows you the chance and probably allows your sheep just a little bit of chance to uh, relax as well. Thank you. My lamb spooks because of other lambs and or maybe the audience spook my lamb. What should, what should I do? Uh, great question. So hopefully um, to follow up on the last one is that we still have the lamb uh, in our control. Uh, we talked a little bit about if they were jumping of, of making sure that we have potential pressure at the top side of its shoulder or at the very least, um, uh, also our hand at the back of the neck. Um, but what I can tell you, uh, I guess uh, that's a trickier question, but my personal answer for that is that animals respond to you as well. And so I would do, what I would do is I would take a deep breath um, because that animal, yes, it isn't working for you, but the worst thing that you can do is to get fired up and to fight back with it. I know um, a, a one of my siblings when we were showing would try to overshow and would try to set the rear leg even if it was at 90 percent or 95 percent like oh man i can get that better and sometimes it's okay to take a deep breath be the calm one in the situation and hopefully your animal responds 
I hope that isn't a cop out answer, but work with those animals at home, obviously, um, to make sure that you can be able to, um, to respond with them. And I think the best thing that you can do is take a step back and just say, hey, I can be part of the solution and be calm as well. I just can't get my sheep to move. I am working it, working it, and it is so stubborn. Any tips? Um, so, I mean, one of the important things is that hopefully if, if we have more than one sheep, okay, um, if we have two sheep, three sheep, four sheep, um, would be to walk those um, just as you're out on a Tuesday evening or a Monday evening uh, this night. Uh, so um, we have those on our halters. And just, just, you know, some of the times they're going to resist that. And then certainly the first times that you are going to do that, they're going to want to resist it. If I was going to exercise some lambs, and this was one of the problems, is that I was going to take them out on uh, tonight's Monday night, so we're going to take them out on a halter, is that don't feed them until they get back, okay? And so if you don't feed them until they get back, they know that there's a reward. And so if you can be able to kind of give them a little bit of a, a, a head game of an incentive, then – when we're coming back, we know those animals will learn that they want to do that. Now, hold them by the head, okay, and disregard the halter and see if we can be able to kind of work with them and train them and then say when they do want to go that I could pull back a little bit. And so I guess I'm using dessert um, as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to win with that one. It was talked about in the video, Dr. Hoffman, about lifting the lambs to set the front feet can you, uh, the question was, is it okay to lift the lambs and just take a short uh, response to that? Okay, thank you. Uh, the, so, so some individuals find it advantageous to lift the lambs. I will tell you that when you are showing at the highest level, there are people that can do it without lifting those lambs. Um, but if you're gonna set the rear legs at the very most, that you so desire to do would be just a little bit of, of weight uh, or, or pressure at the back of the um, ears and the back of the neck to just prop them up so that they set those front legs um, down underneath them. What becomes more of a challenge is that those producers, and we're past this for the most part, ladies and gentlemen, but people would um, lift their lambs and then put their knee into them uh, to brace them and so when you would do that, then, um, then they would go too much. And so if you have to or so choose to lift the legs to set the front legs only for a moment of time, lift them up, put them back down, and then that gets them square. If that's something that works for you best, um, then, then that's okay. But I would also tell you that I would prefer that you did not do that while the judge was looking at you. So the tricky one, because that okay. won't help you. Uh, if you can do it while the judge is looking at you, it's best not to. Yeah, remember what the purpose of showing is. And I guess remember that we are the advocates for the, the livestock industry. And remember that there's people watching your every move. And so some people may deem that as maybe not the, the right thing to be doing to be, um, you know, Travis mentioned the slapping or the lifting and all those other things that, that you might be able to see in a show ring. Remember that people are watching and uh, one of the things that we had as a, when I took an ethics course about, um, about showing livestock, they said, if you have to feel like you don't want to tell the judge the whole truth about whether you should or shouldn't have done something, you probably shouldn't have done it. And so, so think about that just for a, a minute. Um, uh, you know, if it's, uh, we, again, we want to make sure we're teaching the ethics as well as good stewardship of our animals. And, uh, and, and really showing uh, the people that are not in the egg industry why we're doing this. So, so be careful about, about doing things that you may deem to be unethical. Thank you for the clarification, Rick. And I just said, don't do it in front of the judge. So I don't wanna be the one justifying it. So uh, work at home to try to at least minimize that or get that out of your uh, showmanship skills. I think that would be best. Dr. Hoffman, I new to the sheep industry. I can buy some Tunis breed. Should I should that be shown as a meat breed or a wool breed? Uh, the Tunis is considered a meat breed, um, primarily because the quality of the wool uh, is not uh, particularly um, 
high quality. And so what you will do with the tunis is that you will also wash those uh, the two weeks and a week before the show. The difference is with the tunis, obviously you have a red head, but you also have a cream colored wool. And so if you are going to wash them until they turn bright white, you will be washing forever and strongly disappointed. So they have a cream of, um, color of wool, and uh, but please wash them. They're considered a meat breed. What, what tip would you have for me as a beef guy that I've never shown sheep before, but I want to prepare myself for the round robin contest? Um, so good question. Um, two things. All right. So keep the head up and keep the legs, um, square. Uh, so, so the, I mean, those are, those are in order. And then the next one, um, uh, would, would be a bracing at, at some level. Okay. And so keep the head up, um, get particularly the rear leg square and then brace, but brace it most likely 50% Kurt, because if you decide to put your knee into all of them, uh, their legs are going to go back from behind them. They're going to drop on their top. And so don't over brace because that allows you to look like the beef guy that hasn't ever shown a sheep. And Dr. I have Hoffman. one last. Oh, you oh, got one Brian more. Wants it. I have one no, last. Her. I have one last question. Then I'm going to turn it over to you, Brian. You might have some others that you wrote down. Yep. Um, what kind of tips do you have, Dr. Hoffman, for a young person to we're teaching this lamb how to brace at home. We're practicing and we're practicing. What tips can we use to brace that lamb? Good, thank you. And in fact, this is a thing that um, provides integrity to our industry as well, uh, because there are um, you know, methodologies that some people may choose that I don't condone. And so some of the things that I like that um, is, is what you're doing is you're providing that animal um, a little bit of challenge behind them. And, and how I say this is that my favorite is that you push with your, with the inside of your leg um, and let them go backwards. And of course they're like, okay, sweet. This is reverse, which is not what you want. Um, but to identify um, or make a area that's a, uh, that's a puddle in the yard. Okay. Or at least some water because that water scares them. And so if you back up and then you push your leg into them and let them back up two steps and then the third step and they're like, whoa, I'm in the water. I'm falling off the edge of the world. Then they're like, boom, I'm going and I'm giving that a try forward. The other thing is, is that if you develop a small platform of whether that platform is six inches up um, or, you know, which you could just put, you know, the two by fours or two by sixes over a, a plywood or whatever that may be or you can maybe just use your trimming stand that's probably a foot. And so I start on the trimming stand and then I put my weight into its um, breastplate until that rear leg falls off the back, okay? And then obviously I'm not hurting the animal um, because that's just providing some, some intuition that, oh, maybe I want to move forward. Those are some things that have worked for me. Other people might have uh, better things, but it provides some uncertainty that now hey, I want to go forward and I want to uh, try to brace. Thank you, Dr. Hoffman. Uh, I got a few more questions here. They just keep on rolling in. Uh, we're going to try to group a few of these together as they're kind of similar. Uh, first question, uh, we're going to kind of go exercise route here. And first question that I've got is, do you need to stretch your sheep uh, so they aren't stiff before the show? If so, what stretches and how do you do them? Hey, um, what I can say, um, Brian and, and Dr. Skirpe, is that you need to do the stretches, all right, as a showman or the showman need to, uh, okay, so that you're agile enough that you can reach over and grab that uh, rear leg. The sheep will be fine. Um, they, they will be just okay. Uh, that, that isn't anything. Uh, so think about it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, these sheep, uh, if they're living in a pasture, they've already put on several miles or wherever it may be. They'll be just fine. Um, I don't have any particular, um, pregame plans that they need or, or laps that they need to accomplish. I would prefer them be ready to go than worn out. So Dr. Hoffman, keeping with the exercising, what would your recommendations be for exercising those 
those lambs at home, uh, getting them ready for the fair. Is it one time a week, uh, several times a week? Uh, should they be walked, ran, run uphill? What is your suggestions there for exercising and getting these lambs ready for the fair? Um, that's a great question, and I, I, I would welcome in other people's um, thoughts and ideas on this, but I think at least every other day, uh, potentially each night that you get a mile on them, or if you do it every other day that you go two miles, like I said, um, you have to go somewhere and you have to come back. And so I um, always considered it a, a, a quality idea to walk a mile with those animals and then know that the, the mile on the return is much faster. Um, because uh, then I take the halter off if I so choose and, uh, and they're um, motoring and going. Okay. So at least uh, every other day, in my personal opinion, um, in particular as we get back behind there, but other people may have other ideas, and I, I welcome that as well. Okay. Uh, we got some grooming uh, questions. And we're going to start with, uh, can you clean your sheep uh, with a hose outside, or is there different methods? Uh, different, what kind of soaps should a person use? Uh, different, do different soaps do different things, uh, kind of lead into fungicides? Okay, um, so um, just a, a quick interpretation uh, from the question, Brian. Um, yes, you can, uh, um, you know, wash your animals with a hose outside. For all of you parents out there, the fathers and the mothers, uh, it's better than a hose inside. To wash your lamb so I don't know how that was uh, particularly written but um, yes uh, so yeah um, if you use um, a hose now there are any of those particular um, mild soaps of a, a dawn dish soap type thing will work uh, a lot of the livestock supply stores will sell um, uh, different uh, soaps for you the one that works so, um, the best for me uh, particularly in terms of uh, meat breed sheep uh, also can um, can be a product called Orvis, O-R-V-U-S, I believe, or Orvis. Um, so uh, that helps and is a lot stronger type of a soap as well to kind of get a lot of that dirt out. Um, of course, there's some of those other ones. Um, a fungicide, and we didn't really talk about that. And so sheep have the opportunity to potentially get uh, club lamb fungus or what can be considered ringworm. Uh, the more you travel, the more you're exposed to it. Uh, the more hard work uh, that you can be able uh, to do um, to to try to wash those before you leave and when you get home and uh, um, be able to to try to get those uh, sheep clean uh, so that you don't cause biosecurity because once you get ringworm and fungus on those lambs then you aren't allowed to go uh, to the store because we don't let those animals in um, into uh, to shows that have a, a pelt or hide challenge that can be infected. So fungicides is certainly a good way to, uh, to try to help you. But you have to realize that any time that you go out, um, you're at risk uh, from a biosecurity standpoint on that one. Okay, Dr. Hoffman, this individual's only shown calves. They're wondering, can you damage the wool or skin by scrubbing them too hard or too much? Uh, I sure appreciate that 4 hr than the one that forgets to knock out all the uh, the mud and the manure from the from the bottoms of the legs. So I think you'll be okay. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, you know what I would say is don't use the hard bristled rice root brush that Kurt talked about in last week's. Okay, because that will uh, you know just cause a little harder because that's job is to. Uh, stimulate the skin and to stimulate hair growth, but uh, you you should be okay. Okay. Uh, how often would you say a person should wash their sheep at home or at the fair? Um. So I mean, the the one that matters is the one that's that's right before the show. So if that's a, a day or two, um, at the at the very most, um, that in front of the show. But that's up to you. Um, I think that if you do it good uh, the week before, if you just have a market lamb, um, then that's okay. If you've been showing it a couple times or want to get another layer off of the wool, 
um, then you can wash them. The other thing is, is that a lot of the times people will want to wash the, or to use the clipper on those animals while they are still wet. And a lot of times that works a little bit better. So there's no um, particular um, limit. If you, if you know what, if I got an eight year old and that, uh, uh, or there's an eight year old in your 4-H club or a 12 year old and they say, you know what, I want to go wash the lamb uh, as a 4-H leader and a parent, then you say, yes, yes, sir, ma'am, go make that happen. That's just fine. Uh, I don't get in the way of people's work ethics. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, an individual wants to know if they can use a white powder to make them whiter on show day. Um, well, Leanne's smirking, so only illegally. Um, but uh, I have seen that done. Uh, what I can do is I can tell you that you need to confer with your rules. Um, so that will, that will depend if it's an open show or if it's a, a 4-H and junior show. Um, uh, on occasion, it does happen. But I think that in terms, of, in terms of just improving your animal, I'm not convinced that it changes the animal, at least to a strong um, approach. So I don't think that you are getting much uh, accomplished from that. But the other thing is, is that you want to be careful. If you so choose to do that, the other, um, that it's probably not a good idea because there's the chance that the judge puts their hands on it and poof, gets baby powder or whatever it may be. And then you look like an idiot. All right. And so if you, uh, if the judge slaps their hand on your sheep and there's a cloud of powder, no longer did you look like the cool person with the white sheep. Now you just look like the idiot that didn't know what you were doing. So I apologize that I kind of um, split integrity and intellect, but I don't think you need to do that. Sheep are white enough pelted. You'll be fine. Hey, Dr. Hoffman, we got a couple more, and I don't know how much longer Leanne's going to go here, but uh, a real uh, good question here. Uh show has two judges in the show ring. Uh, how should an individual uh, handle that situation? Who should they look at, uh, especially if judges are on opposite ends of the ring? <laughs> um, great question. I like that, Brian. So the show committee, if, if you are not the first person in, um, you know, if, if there are other people that are in in the showmanship, then I would go to the front table and ask, say, who is the lead judge and who is the associate judge? Okay. And so that's how I would handle that um, is at least go to the front table and say, Hey, you know, I'm a senior. I've been, I've been busting it hard all summer. I want to know who the lead person is. And then you identify that and they should clarify that, um, that um, either Jim or, or Julie, whoever it is, whichever one of those there is, one of those people should be the lead judge and they should try to do that. Uh, if they don't, um, then that's your job is to battle uh, um, both both people. But I, if if I was not the first one in, I would go to the front table and ask who is in charge here. Doctor okay. Hoffman, uh, this is Kurt. I have done some co-judging with other judges, and we have always made sure that we told the announcers that yes to let the showman know who the lead judge was so yes. hopefully the judges will also take that into consideration uh dr hoffman a question was do little kids have to use halters no little kids don't have to use halters uh if you've made it to second level already at the age of eight and have enough uh, comfort that Cupid, your 114 pound uh, market ewe lamb works well for you and you've developed a relationship, then go out there and do it and, uh, and win the beginner division. I mean, uh, that's exciting. Um, but of course not. You certainly don't need to in the show ring. And I feel as though those that, uh, that don't have the halters, uh, I know that they are more confident and work potentially more at home that they feel comfortable doing it. Dr. Hoffman, how can you tell or how can you tell when a sheep is fat? <laughs> okay, good. Um, so the difference is is that um, a, a little bit in terms of just shape. Thank you so much. So so we have a a Coke bottle, and if we think of a Coke bottle, it goes like this, right? That same shapes happen with a market animal, whether it's beef, 
pork or sheep or goats, okay? And so those that are trimmer, the one of the quick places that the judge will evaluate is underneath the forearm, okay? So over the ribs. And you will be able to feel, if you can feel the ribs, this is a, a good example, okay? If you can feel the ribs, much like your knuckles, those animals are still plenty too trim, okay? If you can feel the animal and it feels like the back of your hand, you now have a very, very chubby sheep. If it feels somewhat like the first, uh, between your first and second knuckle, then that would probably be a close spot. And so you're gonna feel over its top, they're gonna cover in, and then instead of being a Coke bottle, they become a boat or a canoe shape. Dr. Hoff. Oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I have a private question that just got asked, and this is a fantastic question given the current situation. I have an individual that's located in New York, and with her stay at home order, she is not allowed to go to um, and do anything with the lamb. So, do you have anything or suggestions that they might be able to work on without even being able to work with their lamb? Um, yes. So there's always some things that we could be able to do, okay? Uh, feel free to go back and listen to that uh, showmanship video that, that we have uh, directed. Um, also, there are uh, feed companies now that are now putting out some showmanship ideas. And so you have, if you have availability to, uh, to an iPad or a computer and, and uh, internet access, there are other showmanship resources. The other thing that I would tell that uh, young um, man or woman is that also it's part of understanding the sheep industry. And so look and try to identify a sheep um, fact sheets or knowledge or chapter from an animal sciences high school book or whatever that may be. And so learn about the sheep industry so that you understand more about your um, project when you go do it of how long are those animals bred? What did we feed those? What could we feed those? What cuts of meat are most prominent? Where are the different um, options? And so my apologies, Dr. Skirpe, just because you're on uh, stay at home and hiding uh, behind this doesn't mean you're excused from being a champion uh, a showman. So go ahead and learn about your project just a little bit more. Thanks, Dr. Hoffman. Uh I want to kind of wrap up here. I know we got a ton of questions yet that we haven't uh, scratched surface on, uh, but uh, weight, Dr. Hoffman, uh, what would be a typical ideal weight for a market lamb uh, for an individual to go into a uh, show? Also, what would be a good weight for a breeding ewe such as maybe a Suffolk ewe? Okay, um, market weight. Uh, I would prefer um, the champions to come out of the market weight of approximately 130 to 150 pounds uh, should catch those. But that doesn't have to be that case. But I would aim for between 130 and 150. Um, and the correct weight for a breeding ewe, that is actually too much, um, probably or not enough information to answer it because a Tunis um, yearling ewe um, only weighs 170 pounds and a Suffolk um, ewe lamb uh, in the middle of the summer may also weigh 170 pounds. So that's not quite enough information um, for um, me to, uh, to answer that one. I apologize, but what I would say in terms of the breeding sheep is that I want them on a positive plane of nutrition which means those ewes are gaining weight and it's fitting their body style. All right, thank you, Dr. Hoffman. I have put uh, both mine and his email in the chat. So if there are further questions that you guys wanna ask, certainly feel free to email us. If you wanna tell us what you liked about this so we can um, have an awesome quote from you that says you know, something you learned, that would be also fantastic. We just really want to thank you guys for joining us today. We know that your time is valuable and we are so excited that you chose to come and visit us and be with
with us this evening to learn about sheep showmanship. And uh, we really thank Dr. Hoffman for taking time to um, really share his expertise and wisdom with us. As I said, that this will be recorded. So you can always go back and look at um, this recording if you forgot the answer to one of those questions. So thank you guys. Um, we hope you have a really great evening. Stay healthy, stay safe, and good luck this year. Definitely keep an eye out on the virtual livestock shows that are starting to pop up given our current situation. So if you want to follow us on Facebook, I am certainly always posting updated material. I'm going to put that link in the chat box right now. Um, I'm always posting opportunities for virtual livestock judging contests for both horse and livestock. Um, shows and virtual stuff and so um, there's some fun opportunities so thank you guys so much and I hope you guys have a fantastic evening mm -hmm.